This is Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 3. I suggest you go back and see number 1 and 2. This is a new development I've had. Instead of the first, number 1, I had a pendulum swinging. On number 2, I was testing the uh, pendulum in a different vari uh, ver version. And number 3, this is a much modified and better setup than either one or two. Okay, this is my output. I'm sorry, my input. This is my output. My pet projects are over Unity effects. If my output is larger than my input, then I call that over Unity effect. If I have one penny in of energy and I get five cents out of energy, that's a gain. Okay, we're going to go into testing. This is going to be hand testing, but uh, we'll just be real careful and we'll get in the ballpark. This is my control. This is my reference. We'll find out what it can lift and what it cannot. This is going to be my little place I put my weight so I can see how much weight it can lift on the output. Okay, it can lift that. Let's put one washer in. I'm using this little mark as a scale and try to keep it level there. It cannot lift the one. Now my reasoning is that if I can use this, my control, to spin my input and fire my output, then that would be a gain. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the We'll just say that this can lift that one as a reference. So let's see. I'll use that mark there. Careful as possible. Keep it parallel. And I'm coming in. Some of the force that's coming back on that is the motor itself. I'm using the motor. It already has my axis on it. Makes a nice base. But it does have a little bit of resistance, so uh, I'm taking that into effect also. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay, so it can fire that one. So that would be an equal gain right there, 100% efficiency. Go ahead and put three more on, three more washers in. That'll be a total of four. This is my reference again. It could not lift one, but we're going to call it one. Now be careful when you use my mark. See that it did fire. Okay. That's a uh, total of four. Here's six, two more. One, two, three, four now. Okay. So that's four. Four, five. And there's five. If you uh, watch number ones and twos, this will make a lot more sense. But uh, what we're looking for is more 
power out and the power putting in. This is the put in power. So we did 5. So we're at 1, 2, 5 right now. Two more. Make 7. And some of the resistance is the motor again. So we'll go over this a little bit after we're done. So now we'll put another two, seven, eight, nine. So this will make nine. And then uh, we'll go over why this is doing this. I have these special magnets there, and we'll go into that. So it fires nine. And the last one will go ten. Ten washers. As a point of interest, the, uh, this is an independent system, so it doesn't matter whether it has one or uh, ten. If the, uh, the input is the same, very little. Here, different system. So, fire and I was watching the uh, input here. I believe it did. But there's 10. It's firing just fine. So remember our reference could not pick one washer up and yet we're using the same amount for the input and we're lifting 10 washers. That's a 1 to 10 factor right there. Okay. Go ahead and Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 3. These are special magnets. They're one inch by one inch neos, but they're called diagonally magnetized. Not on top and bottom, but sides. This is a one inch by one inch spacer. It can be nylon, plastic, wood. And here's your bottom neo. And you can see that they're attracting each other in attraction mode north to south, uh, south to north, north to south, but they're diagonally magnetized. The gap is about one and a half inches, and here's my monopole. It's a masonry nail with eight neos on it, one-eighth by one-half button neos. The acting principles, the right hand or right angle magnetics and you can go back to number one Ray's Hobbit world of magnetism one and watch uh, that it'll explain that a little bit better but you can see that this force field the output is at right angles to the input and there's some special effects that take place when that happens we have the magnetic monopole on that output, what it does is it draws the face of that magnet out towards here, purifies it more or less. Instead of having these strong forces intermixed with it, it gets that face of the magnet out and it's more of a pure uh, magnetic field here. The expanded neutral zone also the Hobbit world of magnetism. This is this area here. You can uh, 
go back and watch number one again. But uh, in number one and two, I had this as an iron bar. And it wasn't as strong. I was surprised. So when I put this air gap in here, it uh, strengthened the effect of this neutral zone, this expanded neutral zone. If you don't have that in there, if you have just a magnet, then it's so small you can't get in there and see what's going on. Uh, there's all kinds of resistances that start going. So this opens up that neutral zone, which has some pretty neat effects. Uh, going back to the right angle uh, magnets, this right angle here with the Hobbit World expanded neutral zone, it allows this to come in, this gate, to fire without any resistance, almost no resistance, and that's what I was showing here. It's firing every time. And the repeating magnet gate, that is so important. If you've ever worked with trying to make a gate where magnets will go through, you'll see them on the internet. Uh, the V gates, just all types of them. But they always have something at the beginning, something at the end. They pull back, resist, they fire, they can't get into the next firing. This is something amazing. This fires each way. It's a one-way, well, it's, it's a repeating gate. It's not a one-way gate. It's, it's a repeating gate. So you don't have to have a series of gates. And when you try to make a series of gates, you always have the resistances adding up faster than the forces that want to re, uh, bring it along. So they just don't work. But this is a repeating gate. Very, very, very little input into the gate, it fires, and then very little outward force required. So this is about a 10 to 1 uh, ratio here. I'd say that's 10 times over unity, unless I'm mistaken. And this is my control again. Could not lift one, but we called it one. We also had some drag in the motor. I didn't show that separately, but there is. So it still came in very easily. Okay, this, this, I'm sure Ian's going to have a lot of fun with this. This is just uh, amazing to me. And I'll be uh, looking at it more careful, of course. There's always those funny things. Oh, I didn't think of that. But my testing so far in a lab situation with as close as I can come, uh, it does have about a 10 to 1. If you bump these closer, you get a little bit more uh, stronger magnets. Put this on a little motor, uh, fire this back and forth, back and forth. Use this to run a little generator. So there's a lot of uh, options here that people can work with. And I thank you for watching. You have a great day of inventing yourself.